I am ready to go ahead and start quilting my center medallion and I've gone ahead and printed up my template for my block size and again we're using the making sure you print it so that this is exactly one inch so you have the right scale and this is my seven inch embroidery template because I'm doing the seven inch quilt and it's a little bit hard to see but right here on your instructions it'll show you uh, what order to stitch your embroidery files in so we're doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then the four corners. So basically, we're starting in the middle, working our way around, going outside, 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 and outside, and then we finish with the four corners to evenly do the quilting. So because everybody's embroidery machine is a little bit different, a lot different as far as the hooping goes, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that. Um, we're going to let your sewing machine dealer provide you with instruction on that. But if you are able to use this template, this is what I'm going to do. It has a center crosshair on it. I'm going to tape it on the bottom of my quilting hoop and I'm going to begin hooping and quilting. So let me get this template placed and then we'll come back and show you how to start it. <clears throat> so there's my template, my paper template taped onto the back of my quilting hoop template. And basically this outside line here, this particular corner, we're going to align that with our center seam and our center seam horizontally and vertically. So if you just align those two seams. You don't have to do any marking on your top and get your hoop underneath there. And that's where you're going to place and stitch your C1 quilting design. So I'll go ahead and get that placed and show you how that what that looks like. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've stitched step one, which is my water soluble thread. So you can see the outline right here. And you can see it pretty much landed on the seam line horizontally and vertically. And I aim to have the corner of it at the diagonal. And it's off just a tiny, tiny bit, but I can make that up when I hoop the next section. So that's what you're looking for. So once you get this on the machine, you want to position your embroidery so that it's exactly in this position. And we didn't have to mark our fabric to do that because we used the seams. Then there's two colors in the quilting. I'm going to do all the same color throughout. So this is the first step. And then if you want to, you can switch to your second color and uh, stitch the second step. So we'll come back when that's finished. So we just stitched design C1, which is in this left corner of the center. So before I unhoop this, I like to mark C1. You can use a, a, any type of fabric marking pen you'd like. I'm going to mark that um, on my block so that when I'm rehooping later, I don't get confused as to which one it is and what order what order to do it in. So I just found that to be helpful. And now I'm going to, before I unhoop it, I'm going to clip a few threads. And you can see the design lined up within the spokes. There's a little bit of wiggle room, so don't, don't be too worried, but definitely take your time placing it because it's worth the effort. You can see how it landed right in the spokes. So now I'm going to go ahead and unhoop this. And I will hoop C2, which will be right over here on the right side, and continue stitching. Just finished C2, and I went ahead and marked C2 right here. Now I'm going to hoop for C3. Have my hoop placed for C3, and I've aligned this edge of my template with the seam and this edge of my template with this seam. And I'm trying to get close to the corner here, which I've done. So we're ready to stitch C3. 
Just finished stitching C3, so now I'm going to unhoop, and I've also marked C3. I'm going to unhoop it and hoop it over here for C4, and then my center will be finished. I've got C4 hooped and ready to stitch, so we'll put it on the machine and finish the center part of our center medallion. Pretty excited, I just finished C4, so now the whole center of my center medallion is quilted and now we're left with the outside edges. So this is what the front looks like and again I marked C4 here so I, I need to know my orientation so I can keep going in the right order. So the back looks like this. It's pretty cool. You can see we pretty well lined up in the center. All of our outside edges are aligned as well. So now we will hoop for C5, which will go right above C1. So that will be right here. And again, I'll just put my hoop under there. And for C5, we're going to align this seam here, your vertical seam, with the horizontal stitching from C1. You get those two lined up and you'll stitch C5. So I've got C5 hooped and I've aligned my vertical seam line here on the right side with my horizontal stitching line from the design from C1. And I let the stitching line, I can see it, it's probably difficult for you to see, but I can just barely see the stitching line at the bottom of my template. And when I get it to the machine, I'm just going to check the placement and make sure that it lines up with that stitching line and of course the seam line. So we're ready to stitch C5. Just finished C5 and I aligned uh, the side of the design with the seam and the bottom with the basting stitch from C1 and you can see my little match points are pretty much right on. There's a little bit of wiggle room, so if you have to go down a little bit, over a little bit, the quilting still looks good. So let's zoom out. So there's what we have so far. So C6 is next, which would be right here. And then a quick look at the back. There we go. So we'll hoop up for C6 and continue with our quilting. So I have C5 hooped up and ready to stitch. And I've aligned the side of my template with the seam again and the bottom with the stitching line from C2. So we'll take it to the machine and get it stitched. C6 is here. I just finished it and again um, because I aligned my seam and the top of my embroidery basting stitch with C2. My little uh, embroidery designs matched up perfectly. Uh, so the next would be C7, which will be down here. So it's basically going in a whole line. So this will be C7 and C8. So I'll hoop those up and get those embroidered as well. So I've already stitched C9, C10, so next will be C11 up here. So we'll hoop this and get this ready to stitch. So I have C11 hooped up and I've aligned the left side of my template with the basting line from uh, design C2 and the bottom of the template with the seam line. So we're ready to put that on the machine and embroider this section. I just finished C11, time to do C12. So here I've got my corner C14 in the hoop and I've lined up my outer edge of my template to this side of the embroidery, the bottom to this side. My corner is aligned with the seam here and my, my outside edges are also lined up so it should work out pretty well so I'll put this in my machine and stitch the corner. 
So I've started my corner and I stitched step one, two, and three just like in all the other embroideries where it did your basting stitch and then your quilting. And I want you to notice that the corner here aligns up with the seam. So we're looking for that so we keep everything nice and square. And my edges align. So next we're going to take a triangle of fabric four and there's a placement stitch, stitch right here in the corner which is your seam line. And you're going to place that so that a quarter inch is above that placement stitch of triangle four. So get that placed and put neutral thread in your needle and stitch the seam. There's my seam. So my next step will be to change to my water soluble thread in the needle and we'll, stitch, we'll flip this fabric right side up, smooth it out and tack it down. So I've got my fabric four flipped right side up. Now I'm going to change my needle, my bobbin to my thread F and we will stitch a decorative square right here in the corner. So I have two of my corners done, 13 and 14. And what I have left to do is the last two corners. So we'll do those and we'll come back and work on the center applique to fill up this empty space right here. So to do our center applique to cover up this open area, you'll first want to stitch your center embroidery out. Just follow the directions. It's four simple steps. And then you're going to want to hoop your center medallion with your opening right in the center. On the back side, carefully turn it over. And I took some of this fabric, a little square of it, and I put some spray adhesive, temporary spray adhesive on it, and I'm going to cover up the middle with that. So there'll actually be an applique on the front and the back. So that's stuck down there really well. And just make sure that it's stuck down really well on the back. And now I'll put this on the machine and we'll show you how to apply the center embroidery. So to check the centering of my hoop, uh, different machine brands are going to have different methods. So you use the method that's best for you. But for me, I just lined up my needle. I put my needle down and I could see that I've hit my cross points when I went ahead and quilted my north, south, east, and west. So now I've got match points to line up the applique with this opening. There's little bitty stitches that come down on the north, the south, the east, and the west. So I'm going to go to the first match point, which lines up right with my seam, and I'll put my applique under that, and put my needle down right where that little stitch is. So once I get that aligned, I'll lift the needle back up, and I do have water-soluble thread in the machine, and I'll let it stitch that little match point. It's just a little back and forth stitch to hold it. And then it goes to the next match point, which is on the side. So I just check it, let it tack that down. And now it's to the bottom one. So now I know I have it centered and the next step on the embroidery is to continue with the water soluble thread and finish tacking down the entire perimeter. So I'm going to just cut a few stitches away first, make sure it's laying nice and smooth and go ahead and hit my start. tack down my my applique so we'll come back and show you what to do next 
So the next step is I very carefully took the hoop off the machine, leaving the quilt hooped, and I'm going to trim the applique fabric very close to the basting line because it's going to come back with a satin stitch. So the next step would be to very carefully again turn the hoop over, being careful not to pop anything out. And we'll trim the applique that's fabric that's on the back. Remember we used the spray adhesive, so you'll want to loosen that up and just trim that nice and close. So again, turn it over very carefully. And we're going to put this back on the machine. And we're going to put our thread in the needle in the bobbin to do our satin stitch. So I'm excited to say that I've got my center medallion totally finished. I'm ready to trim it and start putting my quilt together. So we'll come back and show you how to get it trimmed up. So we're going to go ahead and trim up our center medallion. And way back when we first started layering our quilt layers, we had machine basted it around this outside edge. We're going to take a regular quilting ruler and just rotary cut that stitching off. It's still going to leave us about an inch for trimming, which will be fine. This will just speed up the process a little bit. So I'm just rotary cutting off that basting through all my layers. So now I can get to the rest of it. And when we had quilted, we quilted right in the ditch all the way up to that edge. So the next step we need to do is just pop out those few quilting stitches. So here at the corner we can just kind of take our little hoop scissors and get in there and pop out a few stitches. right up to that outside basting line from our quilting. So there's that one. And these are a little bit, the corners I spend a little more time, these just pop out real easy here. And then as I go along, the batting, we had used the temporary spray adhesive. So just pull that batting away from your top and just work your way down. See these stitches come out easy and that basting line keeps it from going any further. So we're going to end up trimming off the batting and the backing just like we do when we do our blocks. Just have to pull that wool back so it doesn't stick to the front. Here's our 
there's the next corner and I've already trimmed that one so that one's loose okay so now we're ready to take our trimmer by George and trim this away here's our trimmer with the metal edge so we just turn back the front make sure that batting's laying down nice and flat and take that metal edge and shimmy it up to that basting line lay it down make sure I have no quilt top sticking out next to the metal edge and then we'll take our 60 millimeter cutter rotary cutter off rotary cut the batting and the backing off which leaves the front so we'll do that all along all four sides there's no front sticking out right here So now we're just left with the front and on the back you'll have the, uh, the batting and the, the backing all cut off. So we'll do that on all four sides. Then after that we'll turn our trimmer over to the ruler side and we'll trim it from the basting line, we'll trim it to a quarter inch seam. So I'll finish my whole center medallion like that, getting all four sides trimmed. 